Ah. I took a pee there. Ready? Mm. Are you actually falling asleep or are you just feigning sleep? You alright? Good pee? Yeah. Marvellous. Ready? Mm hmm. Welcome to Strategy Battle Games on GB Show YouTube video. You're here with your host, GB Show David. And GB Show Tom. And this is episode 65. 66 of the, the Palantir. Palantir. Oh, yes. Oh, just about yes. Just about <laughs> yes. We're back. <laughs> we are back. With a um, confusingly named number. Of the plans here because uh, it's been two weeks. Um, yeah. We had a week off. We did. We really had one week off, right? Yeah. It feels like we haven't done it in a while. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah. It feels like we've missed more than one week. It's been a while, yeah. And then we're actually um, we're uh, recording we're this on, on Thursday. Thursday. Um, we probably record the last one on Tuesday. Yeah. All that. But yes, it has been a while, but we are now back. We, we are. are sorry uh, we missed last week, but as you know, and we know we've all been uh, waiting for the update. Couldn't film last uh, last week because Tom was in Zurich on his mid year. Yeah, that's good. Tom, tell him everything. About mid year. Yeah. <laughs> mid year. Yeah. <laughs> the producer of Dylan Knight's Christmas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How was uh, was Zurich not being there though? Uh, mm. Ultravox gag, yeah. strong. Yeah. Uh, it was good. Yeah? Yeah. What, what happened? Talked about the mid-year. Yeah, how was it? Good. Yeah. Middle. Middle. Average. Yeah. Middle. Good, good profit margins in earthquakes this year. Yeah. <laughs> profit margins <laughs> in earthquakes yeah. this year. <laughs> All looking rosy on the... Uh... I was told to delegate stuff, so I'll delegate stuff to you. Okay. On the magazine, that'd be, that'd be good. What, what do I need to do? Like. I don't know, what do I you think, not do? Um, I think the next earthquake will be a bad one. <laughs> That's probably a good guess. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the sort of thing? Yeah. Anything else exciting? No. Oh, I say anything else exciting. Kind of implies something has already been exciting. <laughs> Got delayed by an hour coming back because French Brilliant. air traffic control are on strike. That is good. Didn't even go to France. Cheers. You didn't even go to France? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Brilliant. So there you go. Um, everyone can relax. <laughs> <laughs> we found out about the mid-year. Everyone's turned off by now. <laughs> <laughs> Update on my carpet, coming later. <laughs> yeah. Right, anyway, tea toast. Right. You already drunk. I did. I can't know what's up. But we have mugs. We have new mug reviews. Have we done? Have we I shown, think we've done we, this. I think we showed Jamie Gibbons their uh, lovely uh, GB show mugs. lovely there. They've, they've gone out there in the world now. Yeah, there's a few stop popping up on the Facebook group. We also have these. Uh, Spil you like saying it, Spilferingen. Spilferingen. The Fellowship from Andreas, the Norwegian Viking, which is a lovely present. We um, met him at the Desolation of Stockport. We met Andreas yeah. at the Desolation of Stockport, and he was a lovely man. Mm -hmm. Absolutely lovely man. Um, we brought oh, over the four of us um, mugs, mm -hmm. so Obviously. thank you very much. Brilliant. Um, great. Brilliant thing. Mm. Like you said, should have gone with cars. Yeah, should have gone with car reviews. <laughs> and he also brought us over some Norwegian chocolate. He did. I did have you, some downstairs. Do you, do you have. Um, is that, does that come up in the comments? It does come up. Okay, so we'll talk about that then. But yeah, so that's uh, that's my mic. We can say about it now. If you like. But then we're, we're, we're nagging on who's... We'll do the tea toast first. Okay. But yeah, it was. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to you, Andreas. Um, tea toast last week was with Jay Acharya, who hey. apparently prefers hot chocolate. It's absurd. I mean, that's not even coffee. Last no. week. <laughs> I, I like hot chocolate, but it's not your... It's <laughs> you your, can't have it. It's all a warm wintry drink, yeah, it's not a... Uh. Or just before bed drink. Mm. Anyway, he is passing it on oh, I'll after this. to Mr. Nathan Ward. Nathan Ward, what another lovely man. And there you go. I'm totally lost act on Ryan, you can sort out who's had it or who doesn't, but I have a fe sneaking feeling Nathan's had it. Oh, I, I, let's go around again, as yeah. Louise <laughs> once sang. Um, I have no problem with that, because... <laughs> Who cares, frankly? Yeah. And then there's another one to you. <laughs> there's one um, to you, Nathan. Pass it on. And let us um, know if you had it before. Yeah. Um, Nathan was at the destination of Stockport. He was. Very lovely man. Yes, indeed. And, um, 
Yeah, he's won a painting competition at, in for his Galadriel. Was it? Yeah, in and the like league a... finale last season, yeah. his it was the scary Galadriel. More oh, respect, Galadriel. Um, painted very nicely tonight. on the rock. Teaser. Mm, yeah. mm. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> to you, Nathan. Um, okay, on to the news. What news is there? Um, there is a new Battles Companies PDF okay. available. Um, so this has been produced by um, Jonathan Baker. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, he's updated it to include new factions, etc. Great. Um, there is a link in the issue episode sixty-five in the comments. Okay, yep. Good if you that. find William Farquharson's comment, thank you, William. Um, you can find a link to the Battle Companies, otherwise just search for it on the Great British Hobbit League Facebook page if you just type in Battle Companies into the search bar. If you're on your computer, not your phone, because the phone app's annoying, then you can find it as well. Brilliant. But yeah. Um, Good for any Battle Companies. We love Battle Companies. We used that. Well, we used it as a rough outline for our Battle Companies on the channel. Hmm. We had to make some slight changes just because of what models we had available and yeah. that kind of thing. Cool, cool. Yeah, there you go, and that's what um, Jamie used in his uh, for, in the first battle. It's basically what we use for the battle companies on the channel. Has been updated. Uh, Warhammer Fest is in a, a week as you're watching this. Uh, or oh, yeah, it's well. nearly a week as we're watching it. It's next week, entry. indeed. Um, and the Middle Earth team will be there. Mm. And we should probably say now that I'm away the week after. Right. And I don't know how likely it is next week either. Mid so, No. <laughs> but I'm going to Miami this time, not Zurich. He's going to Miami. With Welcome work. to Miami. So I'll just, I'll just be in a hotel. So we in a think, conference. We think no plant in next week. But, well, there could they're be. dropping this on me live. There could be a plant in next week. But there certainly won't be the week after because I'm in America. Okay. Brilliant. And then I'm away the week after that. Oh, great. Well, this is a disaster. This is happening live. <laughs> um, I'll see what I can do, guys. So, yeah, this might be the last plant here for a while, but you may get one next week. Oh, there you go. Something to look forward to. Or not. <laughs> um, we've got some good, long, decent, plantier-esque content in the can that was going to go out on Tuesday or Wednesday, but will mm. now be going out next Friday. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll try and fill the uh, chill, fill the void left by Tom uh, somehow, perhaps with a rock yeah. of some sort. John McConnell would like it to be filled by a rock. Um, <laughs> he, he so yeah, get your ticket for um, Warhammer first. Yes. Because the Middle Earth team are going to be there. We with friends. With friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I saw a post, this was on the Great British Hobbit League post, so mm -hmm. I, I think this is alright, I feel <laughs> terrified about all this stuff. But um, with Adam saying that the hope was the source books would be available there. Mm. So there you go. Um, it wasn't guaranteed, but that's, I think, what they were aiming for. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's, he's hinted okay. that cool stuff will be there. Cool stuff. There's been posts saying, I don't know, just posts from Adam saying, like, I oh don't know, it'll be worth it, or, okay. oh yes, will there be any you know news there, oh yes, that sort of thing. So I, I don't know what will be there, but... I think it could well be worth um, mm. going along if you like that sort of thing. Indeed, and it's easy to get to being in the middle of the country for most people. Yeah. Well, let's say easy, relative for everybody. Um, all right. Okay. So, moving on to tournaments. <laughs> has Ed, has Ed mentioned? <laughs> yeah, we've had the Desolation Stop Park. Yeah, there is a mini tournament in Scotland today. Is is it tomorrow? No, it's is it this week. It, it's like. It's like today as we're filming. Is it? It's on a Thursday? I think so. Is it? I don't know. Are you insane? Why don't you talk about the other ones while I look it up? Well, I can look it up. Right, okay. So what's next? Um, after that, it is the return to Rivenstead, which is tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, which we're, we're going to. I'm yeah. excited about it. Um, Go to Thousand Points um, in Tut Pub. I will be going along to that, and I'm, I'm giving this one a go. Like, who knows? Maybe if I find the time, maybe that could fill a Friday. I might do a tournament review or something. 
Well, it's happening right now. It's, all, it's on. It's on. You've now. missed it. <laughs> it's all Thursday. It's all on Thursday. Oh well, good luck. Crazy Scots. <laughs> you would say that. <laughs> um, oh, well, good luck to everyone there. Yeah. Um, I hope it went well. Um, yeah, he's about for, returns to Riverstead. Very excited about mm -hmm. that. Um, thousand hope, points. Thousand points. But you have to have three hundred and fifty. Three models making yeah. up three hundred and fifty points worth. What are you going with? Um, I'm going with Riding Out of Helm's Deep. That's a great thing. Where did you theme. get that from? Don't know. Um, so that is Aragorn Mounted, uh -huh. Legolas Mounted, yeah. Theoden Mounted, yeah, Gambling with the Banner Mounted, oh, that's and a Rohan Captain, because Rohan Captains are for winners. With shield? With shield. Of course. On a horse. Oh, doesn't need it. Doesn't need it. <laughs> Just, um, Dismount shield. I was keen to do all of it with AMA Gandalf the White, Erkenbrand as well, but even at a thousand points, if you want enough riders to make it semi-competitive, so you don't just get slaughtered or aren't going all hero, then you have to pick one or the other. Really, I think. Yeah. But it should be fun to use anyway. Yeah, well, I, I, when I took it to Throne of Skull, <laughs> um, it, it was really good fun. If you just like uh, Throne of Skull is slightly different because you're really not trying to win the games. But yeah. I was just chucking the entire army straight into someone's face oh, and seeing what that happens. That is exactly what I intend to do. None of this skirmishing around shooting. Yeah. So it was. Um, yeah, you might have one turn of shooting, but then. Throwing spears for the win, man. Throwing spears. They do, they do a lot. Um, Everyone will do a lot. Yeah. Also, Theoden will do a lot because I'll have Gambling of the Banner effectively making He's Mighty good. Hero. And there's a game where the leader gets Mighty Hero. So he'll go down to zero might, he'll get a might point from Gambling, and he'll be Mighty Hero. Two might Theoden per go. There's a game yeah. where the leader gets Mighty Hero. Yeah. I, I say I'm going along to compete at this one, but I haven't even looked at the scenario. You have to you have to kill more models with your leader, who is probably Saruman. Oh. Well, <laughs> not the Saruman gets mighty hero. Brilliant. It might be in combat. Sam? If it's in combat, you Oh, let it be Sorcerer's Blast. <laughs> let it be against Wood Elves. <laughs> Please. That would be awful. Is that how you win that game? Your leader kills more? It's, that's literally it. That's it? That's the game. That's that, then. <laughs> There's a chance that won't come up though, presumably, if it's not Sam's normal things. You have to I run from haven't read the rules quite well enough really? to know. Oh, well, I'm But out. that's because I don't care about winning. Can't win that. <laughs> Combat wizard for the win. Um, anyway, that's the first one. Second one is. Um, our one. It's our one. Terrifying one. Oh, yeah. Do we need a team? There is a team spot, but there are some teams on the reserve list yes. that we should approach. Yeah, um, seven stones, which we're very excited about. Um, I haven't like, I mean, everything. Don't make me panic. Everything's done for it, but we have. Apart from the raffle. <laughs> apart from the raffle, he screamed. We need to get stuff for the raffle. Yeah, um, we were concentrating everything on issue three of SVG, so we haven't yeah. really um, been kind of pushing it. But then also it's full up, so it's yeah, it's kind of done. But if um, yeah, if I think that's it's kind of the same as last time, really. Mm. And that we haven't changed too much, so the effort that we were putting in last time, we don't need to necessarily this time. Yeah, absolutely. But that one, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. And then after that, da -da 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 -da. are you getting something? A tissue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll usually go down and get something exciting. Um, it is Sutton, um, and that is Ed Ball and Owen's event. Which is Seed. Uh, the second May. Oh, it's the first May Bank Holiday. No, no, no. Oh, that, theirs isn't a Bank Holiday. Theirs isn't a Bank Holiday. You sound like a crazy person. Um, when is it? It's um, it's in, it's in June. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> it is. You're going, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm going. It's happening. Is it like June the 11th? Stop, just stop guessing dates. It is June the 11th, and it's called... The battle is causing incredibly convoluted, <laughs> as is their one. The Battle of Unnumbered Tears 2016, the unexpected. Oh, that's all that shows up here. It sounds like the unexpected desolation, desolation of the five armies or something. Yeah. Um, over two days, uh, it's an escalation tournament um, that uh, you split your army into two. Yes. I think it's 400 and. It's a thousand points, isn't it? 400 and. Yeah. One's about 400, one's about 600, something like that. I can't. Again, haven't read the rules, but just know I'm going. <laughs> I think it was like 400 and 400 possibly. Oh yeah, I can't, to be honest, I can't. Um, tickets are £30 um, for the weekend. When's early bird? 
Oh, I think early bird's gone, isn't it? No early bird for you. Until 1st of May. Um, and there's up to 60 places, so there's still places available for this. So this is the first year virtual yeah. tournament you can <laughs> now get to. Yeah. Um, on the 11th and 12th of June. It's a great um, venue. Sutton's uh, near Rish to Nottingham in terms of the grand scheme of the country. Indeed. And it's close enough to the 281 that you can mm -hmm. stay there, which is brilliant. Um, I sadly can't go because I'm doing a charity walk. Not good. Oh, I need a 281 bed, buddy. That's uh, <laughs> what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> And they have to be. It's quite interest. It's quite interesting because they have to be from different lists. Your two armies. These two armies you split yeah. into have to be from different lists, which is quite cool. Um, and it's run, of course, by Ed Ball and Owen Wright. It's because they have some scenarios where one has to save the other. That yes. Kind of thing. So um, that's the that's the kind of big one coming up that you might want to get along to because you've got plenty of time mm. and plenty of space left to um, get involved. So yeah. get on it, guys. Um, new shout out on Owen for. Giving away a free copy of Kingdoms of Men to somebody, absolutely unbeknownst to us. That, yeah, at the moment, but you have to um, play to him. If it's still in play, all you have to do is write a paragraph about your favourite Kingdoms of Men hero, and um, he'll pick his favourite. Yeah, and, and if you have got the book, feel free to enter. But then note at the bottom that you've already got the book, so don't need the prize. Absolutely, because it's his intention is to give it to somebody who doesn't have it. Um, Very noble indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, um, we've talked about my mid-year adventures, so we can move on from that. Glad you put that on the agenda. Um, <coughs> okay, trivia section. Trivia section. Question from last week, Damien. Your question was... Uh, who, which two people, built Edoras? Someone went for the Perry Twins. <laughs> Green oh, stuff. Um, all right, so we have... Um, well, you said one was easy enough to get. What was that? Um, Helm, wasn't it? No. <laughs> no um, the other one. Ale. Ale the Ale. The other yeah. one. <laughs> Ale, Ale. Ale was the easy one. And a few of you got that. Andres Norwegian Vulcan, Comic Murray, and Luke O'Reilly. But mm -hmm. that doesn't get you a friend, though. Mm -mm. Night. Night, everybody. Night. Um, it was, in fact, Ale the Young and. Brago. His son, apparently. Aragorn's horse. Aragorn's horse. Yeah, the first, yeah, yeah, true story. Or, alternatively, Aragorn, previously Theodred's horse, was named after the second King of Rohan. Yeah. Um, two people got this correct. Both of them. Both of them. Two people got it correct. And they were Zarfa Angel and Dave Egan. That's some, um, some suspiciously knowledge. impressive knowledge. That's some strong knowledge. Well done, guys. You've run the right to buy yourself Freda. You do have indeed. Um, I'm sure somebody else said something funny about Edoras. <laughs> uh, was this was this Wobchicka? I don't know who built Edoras, but assuming it was a British construction company, it was probably several billion over budget and five years late. Boom boom. Boom boom. All right. Okay. Uh, my oh, and then so yeah. My question was. Um, what does Orthang mean? And I can't remember if I asked what it meant in Elvish or in Rahiric. I think you meant Rahiric, personally. I think I did. In which case, the answer is cunning mind, but I don't think anyone said that. But in Elvish, it means Mount Fang. And one of you got that correct. And it's Andreas, the Norwegian Viking. Way! So all you guys who've got the correct answer have earned yourself the chance to buy yourself a Frodo. You mean just Andreas? And... South Angle and David. Oh, from the first question. But no one got a double Freddo. No. Um, so Andreas um, said um, that. He, so basically, he gave us this chocolate from did. Norway. Yeah, as a lot of our mugs. Mm -hmm, which was very nice. Um, and he said that seven out of eight people who we asked about this chocolate said it was better than a Freddo. Who was the eighth? Me. Freddo's better. Well, you, you were the one of eight. Yeah. Well, then, frankly, Andreas, I call shenanigans on your statistics because <laughs> I also said it wasn't as good as the first. So, immediately, we've got two out of two eight. Two of nine. Or maybe not, maybe it's just, you know, sugar fan statistics. Yeah. It was very nice. It was very nice. enjoyable, but Freddo, come on. <laughs> come on now. Um, he gave us, it was a bar. He gave us, it was very generous. A bar like that. Yeah, it was. A huge bar of Norwegian chocolate. And I was like, that's amazing. And I ate it. 
They have a few bits of rib, but I hate it over the two days. <laughs> but there's no way I would ever go to it. On the weekend, you get a bar like Dairy yeah. Girl and just eat it. I was like, oh, well, this is a Norwegian and be a tournament. So yeah. this, this has no calories. No. <laughs> between those two things. I just, yeah, I just ate it. It was very good. Um, Andreas did write a nice note and said it was wonderful meeting up with both of you and tossing some dice in the participation games mm. for the SPG. We'll talk about that a bit later. Um, now we need to schedule a loan of the scenery for our grand campaign when we get to the fall of the necromancer in one year and nine months. I can't, even, <laughs> I can't begin to imagine the shipping costs, but um, you'd one be very million welcome. Pounds. Yes. <laughs> you'd be very welcome to come over and play a game. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, we did have some interesting answers for what Orthanc meant. Lots of people went for tall, black, pointy shaft or similar. Yeah. Big spiky thing. Yeah, good. Very tall. Um, um, somebody said a massive waste of the average Numenorean's taxpayer's gold. <laughs> I think that was Dave Egan. That's good. Um, all right. So, trivia for this week, Damien. Do yeah. you have a question? I do indeed. My question is, as I'm sure you're very familiar with, just outside the gates of Edoras, there are um, rows of graves in which Shimmel Moonland grows upon them. But my question is, at the end of the Third Age, mm -hmm. how many graves are there outside Edoras? At the end of the Third Age? <laughs> Why is that? What? Well, you have would, to get your point in the middle of... Because yeah, well, cause more people die. Yeah, I know. Yeah. At the end of the Third Age, and I don't just mean like graves outside Edoras <laughs> in the entire of Middle Earth. I mean, like there are the mounds yeah. reserved for, I believe, a certain lineage of people. How many are there outside Edoras? Bonus points if you can. Yeah, name bonus, them bonus <laughs> Fredo. <laughs> name them, like mound one. Bonus Fredo if you can tell me how many rows they are in and how many are in each of those rows. That's, there, gi that's and, giving and you a clue. It's be, probably not a prime number answer, guys. There will be well, now as a you bonus down. Freddo <laughs> if you get it right for however many rows there are. So say the answer is seven rows. Yeah. You'll get a Freddo for getting it right. A, Fre a Freddo per row. That's oh. eight. That's yeah. eight Freddo because you got that right. And then um, another Freddo if you've got the right number in each row. There's going to be one row now, isn't there? Probably. No, you're giving out so many Freddos for it. All right. Okay. Interesting like question. Hundreds of Freddos or two available there. <laughs> yeah. um, my question is, according to a height chart by Weta, <laughs> which four dwarves are the shortest in the Cothorans company? What? They're all the same. They're all to you know one point x x meters. They're all the same. So yeah, which four dwarves are the same height? Well, as and they're the shortest. As everyone in the trivia section, you can't go look this up. You've got to go from memory and, and knowledge and that sort of thing. And guess you know what else, as ever, on the planet, mm -hmm. everything we say here are in your own thoughts <laughs> and views and opinions and they do not represent the views of the trivia show or the podcast <laughs> or the Great British Hobbit League or any other formal body or institution such as the Middle Earth Height Chart Creation Company. <laughs> Wetter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, trivia section. Indeed. All right. Uh, what else did we? What did we talk about last week? We just did comment reviews, really. Didn't really have a topic, did we? Couldn't tell. You. We just Oh, about. Pringlegate. Pringlegate is back. <laughs> God no. I said no more. <laughs> I know you said not to mention it again. This is Larry Miller. But you asked the question. Who else? So I'm going to answer. Uh, they don't contain enough potato. They're around 40% potato to be counted as crisps. And they're in fact savoury snacks. That said, researching this further has found that a judge overruled that previous ruling. And now since they're close enough to crisps to count as borderline crisps, they are now taxed as if crisps, though still not technically crisps. I would rather hear more about <laughs> your mid-year. <laughs> what if I have Pringles on my mid-year? Oh, can you imagine? Oh dear. I've had my fill of mid year. Okay. Um, we talked about SVG because that's what we've been doing at the moment. Uh, we asked if people would want um, to subscribe if we had some oh, sort yeah. of subscription thing. Mm -hmm. So I can say what a few people said. 
Yeah, Larry, Miller. Larry Miller, I definitely like the idea of a subscription. Thanks, Larry. And Sorry I'd about almost Pringles. certainly get behind it. Almost certainly. Depends on how much we bang on about Pringles. Mm. Uh, David Whitaker, um, he said, not, pla <laughs> not Palantir related, but I'm currently watching Jurassic Park with a commentary from the Weekly Planet podcast. It's great fun and it's got me thinking that you guys should get on the, with some Lord of the Rings Hobbit commentaries, perhaps as part of your SBG subscription service. Yeah, we did talk about it. We've talked about doing commentaries a few times. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't think we do it as part of the subscription service. No. It's, it's, they're, they're long videos to record and then there's issues with um, the the, setting it up and, and, the legality. Right time, and the legality of hearing the movie on it. We're yeah. not sure how that will work. Yeah. Um, but it is something we have thought about and you're right if you guys enjoy listening to us ramble on on a Friday then I humbly think you might enjoy us listening we could do rambling on a lot of planter specials yeah commentary part one yeah um, alright uh, the Commander Kaiser said can't wait for the next issue got it all pre-ordered now thank you for everyone who pre-ordered uh. it's given us a lot to package but it has made our life a lot easier Um if there was a subscription, I'd definitely go for it. If it meant getting issues more regularly, mm. it would not. We're not going to. Um, I don't think there's any point in sugarcoating this. We we um we wouldn't want to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. Um, it it won't mean there's any more regular issues at all. No. <laughs> well, why do it then? I say. <laughs> no, that the idea would be you would yeah. get additional content and you would get to help with the creation of the magazine yeah. in a way. Yeah, and you'd. On average, I'd say get two a year, but you may get one, you may get three. Yeah, I saw there was a comment on, because um, we've had some YouTube reviews of it already, which have been great. There's a comment on saying it'd be nice if it was more than once a year, and it should be more than once a year. Yeah. Yeah, last time was a little bit of an exception, but we'll have two out this year, and potentially three. We could potentially do three this year. I mean, the likelihood is two. Um... <laughs> It all depends. I mean, it depends how big a scale the magazines are as well, because we, if we try to make it more and more epic, then it takes longer to do. Yeah. We could we could probably bash out some quick ones, but then you know, we want to make it good rather than just rushed. And yeah, we certainly... Not, you know. The first two came out seven months apart, and it's only the third one that's taken a year. And yeah. We certainly hope it'd be more two months. But no, it wouldn't... We, we're not going to be able... Any, it would take a exponentially large increase in numbers to even make Tom and me think about the possibility of taking not, like a day off work. It's not feasible. You know, it's not. We're we'd need like we we'd need enough people to we'd need people to like I, we'd need to shift three magazines per hour. Yeah. There you go. Something like that. I believe it. Boom, 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 boom. Like it's just not going to happen. There aren't enough There's SPGs not enough in the world to support. Yeah. It, unfortunately. There's, there's not saying there never will be, but yeah. um, what but what it would do is it would be helping us out, and like we said, we'll be there'll be maybe a behind the scenes video thing, mm -hmm. like a jerk, like a vlog, and there'll be yeah, you get you'd certainly scenario. get more, but you know as, but as you we said, said uh, when I say more, I just mean more stuff from us, but not necessarily yeah. magazines. As but, we said, when it comes up, we'll you'll have the option to see what it'll be. Yeah, I will jump to Wah's comment, because his was quite good. Uh, where is it? Wah. He said, I've paid £2 a month for subscription. Uh, if we still got current one magazine a year and a chance to natter on a Facebook group, if it's three magazines a year, I'd happily pay the £5 a month. Food for thought, £3 a month, one magazine a year, but we also get one to two page PDFs throughout the year as part of the subscription. Um, means you're not burning out, churning out three magazines a year, but we still get extra content. You would get, I think the, the plan would be you'd get bonus stuff, definitely. Yeah. Like, um, things that didn't kind of fit in the magazine. Yeah. I think we talked about it. But, um, so yeah, that's a good idea. Well done to War as well, who went to uh, Eating Canada. Mm -hmm. And I believe went to Victoria, was it? Um, is that right? To, they, they went on like a little um, expedition mm -hmm. to um, try and promote The Hobbit. Yes. A different um, games workshop without any support. And I believe they've had five people sign up at that games workshop. So well done. Um, spreading the hobby love. Indeed. Um, Which didn't sing, by the way. Yes. Uh, I thought that's now I'd happily do a subscription. 
Um, Control. Thank you, Ryan. Lucas Whitcroft, right, same again. Um, Zalfa Engel, I understand uh, this is slightly separate, but he says, I understand your reasoning for not making profiles. So this is more talking about content, mm -hmm. the issue for content. Yeah. But I really do think that the magazine would shift either way. So. Maybe. Yeah. But we also don't want to tread on Games Workshop's toes, if you see what I mean. We're yeah. quite. We really like the people who are putting a lot of time into the game now on their end. And, you know. We'd rather they did it than we did it. My, my, my opinion on it is that when issue two came out and we had the difference or different terrain, Young mm -hmm. Marlin and Golb, people thought they were cool. Mm -hmm. And if people picked up issue two now, or for the moment at least, I think they'd still think they're cool. Whereas if we now release, I, I don't know, again, I'm guessing about Games Workshop, yeah. but if we release models for day, profiles for day yeah. and Hills, people think they're cool. As soon as Games Workshop release rules for these, they will, won't think ours are cool anymore, they think ours are out of date. Yeah. It'll be like picking up one of the old journey books with the old profiles and they'll go, oh, that's a bit annoying. But of course, the counter argument is they would have already picked it up. Yeah. So, yeah, but I, I think we're trying to give people as good value for money as we possibly can. And if I pick up those old journey books, which I love so much, they've got great scenarios, great scenery articles, and then they've got a bunch of pages at the back which I don't look at because mm -hmm. they're out of date. And we're trying to keep it. As free from that sort of stuff as we can. Yes, indeed. Um, Richard Clamour, um, whatever the release schedule, I'd definitely subscribe. Have no concerns about price, either short, uh, short of it costing the equivalent of 1,180 Freddos. It will be less than that. Just supporting the project all year round is a great idea. Go, Rohan Captain. <laughs> Thank you very much, appreciate it. Um, to, to Rob Canavan, I'd subscribe straight away if the output of the magazine was two to three copies a year. Go for it. Uh, Jericho. Jackson, you guys should do audio books of SBG magazine, so I can listen to the articles and battle reports whilst painting, and then a slideshow of the pics to accompany it. That's a great idea. <laughs> Created and edited by Tom Harrison, Damien Over. Layout and design, Damien Over. Article contributor. <laughs> That's all. Thing. <laughs> I. <laughs> You'd have to get some oh, bedtime, bat bedtime bat rep. <laughs> you do an audio book. I don't know, maybe. This is where, yeah, you'd have to. It'd probably be knee deep in subscriber territory. Yeah, I think. And then we could probably get one of the subscribers to, to do, do it for us. To do it for us. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't have to read. So they'd subscribe, pay, and go. Could you do this? Can you read the cause... magazine? <laughs> anyway, nice idea. Uh, Matt Clays, I can only echo the two to three. Issue per year sentiment. I'd order every single one of them. Not sure I'd subscribe though. Don't know if the subscriptions are a good idea. They bring a lot of extra pressure, obligations, and workload for you guys. But in the end, it's obviously your decision. And um, we kind of agree, but that's why we're trying to say that it doesn't impact your getting behind the project rather than getting behind us doing more. We're yeah. not doing. We'll we'll do stuff at the same, the whatever pace we can do. We've now we've now been doing this for nearly two and a half years and I think it's fair to say two a year is realistic three isn't I think I think it might be that three yeah. fall in a calendar year but yeah I, I think that's that's what you'd be expecting yeah yeah I mean that's I, we, I mean the main thing plan. is just getting is just getting everyone together if you think about it for the battle report and getting the photo studio with Jim and making sure we're all free on the same weekend because we have so many other things and tournaments or whatever it, you could have another two months before you hit a slot where everyone's free if you can't do one day I think um, we've got a pretty solid plan for the next three issues and they're probably going to be about six months apart so we're mm -hmm. pretty happy with that yeah. so that gives you some idea yeah. um, cool, Nalsey um, said on the subscription idea yes 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 great idea and some well deserved support for the SPG magazine as creators thank you um, t -t 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 looking forward to issue three um, have I missed anybody oh um, William Farquharson also said um, I was just wondering whether the decision to delay the release of the digital version was taken to give those who donated an exclusive or to increase donations and therefore secure the future viability of having a physical issue. I'm not saying this to complain or criticise, just want to say someone who always gets a physical issue, I wouldn't enjoy my physical issue any less if somebody somewhere was reading a digital copy for free. Uh, honestly, a bit both, hmm. I think. 
I think we um, uh, there's no denying it that obviously if people that we we make a huge outlay on the physical copies, mm -hmm. we essentially take a punt on the community. So any way we can encourage people to back the project and help us get that back mm -hmm. is a big help for us and helps us to then be able to finance the next one. Yeah, be because it's a free PDF, the people who read the PDF and don't get a physical copy, not that there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, and we, wa we want it to be free to everyone in the end, we still want that, but we had that option where you have the, we have this competition, so even if you gave £2, then you'd be entered into the competition and have a chance to win, but it's literally, I could count them on two hands, how many people have done that, yeah. and so there's the, it, you, people either donate the amount to get the physical copy or they don't. Yeah. So, you know, um, if we, yeah. And the, the other side of what I was saying is that the the slightly more generous side, I guess, on our part is that yeah, I I sort of feel the people who then do support us, we should mm. give them an exclusive. Yeah. It's like eventually we will release this for free to everyone, yeah. but if you would like to support us in this project, yeah. as so many people have already, then yeah. I think giving them an exclusive is a nice thing to do. I think it's also not, I mean, you know, we've released some of the pictures, but that, you know, I, th I think it's nice for people who want to, re to read it as a physical copy to be able to read it without having that PDF somewhere where you'd, you know, if, you, if it came out on the day of release, you'd probably read the PDF first rather than the physical copy. Yeah. Unless you were really determined to wait for the physical one. And I think it's a million times better experience reading it in the physical copy than it is on a PDF. Yeah, okay. But anyway, um, thanks for the question, William. In Austria. Um, Dave Schurer has asked a question I meant to ask at Stockport, but. Uh, is that the end of the subscription yeah, stuff? It's another SVG question. Okay. Um, he says, Are you guys aware of other SVG fanzines out there? I found a French SVG fanzine called Les Irreductibles Dinner Dimes. Yes. Something like that. When I was looking for a French forum, and um, I speak next to no French, but the pictures are pretty, not quite on the scale of your magazine, but I thought it was interesting and wondered if you knew of anyone else trying this. Yeah, there's there's two yeah. I'm aware of. I, I've seen that one. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you looked at the French one? Yeah. The the problem for me with the French... Well, it's French. It's French. So it's I can't read it. it. Um, but also, it's got a lot of pictures from the films in it. Mm -hmm. and a lot of pictures of what look like kind of games workshops models and those sorts of things yeah. and so I don't know not that this this obviously doesn't matter to them I guess yeah. um, but it, legality wise you know there's there's issues there with using people's yeah. stuff where we're very very keen that every single image is ours. in the magazine is ours or is credited to the person who's yeah and well, they we have permission to use yeah, it yeah we have permission to use it um, but yeah they, they had some decent stuff in they've got um they, they had quite a nice article about Gandalf in the French one that was like mm -hmm. a history of Gandalf in models. So they had a picture of every single Gandalf. That's cool. Which We've was not done cool. that kind of article where we look at a history of a model mm. or anything. I don't think that was quite nice. But again, part of the reason for that is what they do is they, they just essentially Googled the pictures and put them uh, all yeah. in, whereas we we'd, we'd have to pay them Gandalf. Well, we're not far off, actually. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, there, was a, there was an interview with, a, I think, a... Games Workshop Manager or something. Um, mm -hmm. There's a battle report and stuff. There's, there's nice content in there. I, um... Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I think I'm getting sick. Good. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure about how big the readership is on that or anything. Mm -hmm. But we, I mean... <laughs> Maybe that magazine has meant that we, we traditionally haven't had many people from France get the magazine at all. And whether that's because they read the PDF rather than getting the physical copies, because then we don't see who does that. The language barrier could be so. But yeah, I think that potentially, for whatever reason, France, just relative to the other European countries, just haven't been in touch nearly as much. Yeah. We get them, um, you know, yeah. Um, there's also the skirmisher, isn't there? Yeah, there's the skirmisher from Germany, which has a reasonably sized team who helps with that. There's quite a few of them. Um, that was cool. Again, the other issue is it's in German. Yep. So, I think for I think we're lucky, actually mm. being in English, that 
our language certainly is not universal, yeah. but it's um, it it reaches a greater market yeah. being in English and instead of French or German. There's a greater number of people who play the game in the UK yeah. just because that's where Games Workshop are based. So yeah, those are the, those are the two I'm familiar with. Is the skirmish the one that had the John Howe artwork in it? Yeah, they got the mission to use John yeah, Howe's yeah. artwork cool. on there, which is cool. Um, so yeah, there's other stuff. There's other stuff by um, out there by people doing stuff, which is cool. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. They they seem to go for the fanzine approach, whereas we've always strived for a magazine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we call it a fanzine. It's meant to emulate a kind of glossy mag. Yeah. Who knows? Yes, indeed. Okay, that. So quite that seems quite positive it. about the subscription. Then. Yeah, I would say so. I mean. Uh, we don't mind if people don't want to, it's more people have been asking can we subscribe and we just say well no. But then we thought if we do something we can't have a subscription because we don't know when we're going to release. So if we just say you get the stuff when it comes out but you can also be involved in inside yeah. chats and help in some way. Yeah. If that's what you want then great, if not do what we've always done. Yeah. And if you don't want that you can even wait for the physical copy and get it for free. <laughs> so. It doesn't matter Digital. to us. Yes. Did I say physical? Can't have that for it. No. No, no, no. <laughs> we have mortgage to pay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So yeah, um, that's it on the magazine. Um, we were going to give a quick um, overview of the Desolation Software on it. Oh, there. I mean, there's a topic, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about Pringle game. <laughs> we did indeed. So yes, that's what we wanted to talk about—a little review of certainly of our experiences of the Station Support, mm, which yeah. was last two weeks ago. Yes. No. Um, so yeah, it was run by Jeremy Giblin and James Clark, our um, <laughs> northern hosts, and they uh, did a great job. It was a big event as always. Um, only the fifty this time, and that's <laughs> yeah. purely because. Um, uh, what are they called now? Steamforged. Steamforged um, had were basically m moving out at the time, so they had stuff everywhere that covered some of the gaming tables and wasn't in a state to. The North West Game Center had changed. Yes, it's covered in Guild Ball. Yeah, Guild Ball everywhere. Um, but anyway, yeah, fifty people which is cool, and we had Andreas the Norwegian Viking. Great to meet you, and Søren. Søren. Søren had come back from Denmark for his second. Uh, stop our event. Indeed. Was that it on the international front? The, some of the Irish guys, yeah, right? but they, it's not like they don't count. But they're not, yeah, but they come. They're fairly regular. Fairly regularly. Um, yes. Lots of new faces as well, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, so we went up on the Friday, and we didn't travel together. No. In a shocking twist. Yeah, you. You had an affair with <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave Fredericks, <laughs> which you would have been doubly yeah. angry about. Um, <laughs> And we had to, as you know, we were taking the participation game up there, and we had to fit all that in the car. We didn't know if it fit. It turned up to yours at lunchtime on the Friday. Yep. Thankfully, it all did fit in, and then we headed off. Yeah. And you popped off to the train station. I went on the train, yeah. And then um, we had the weirdest journey. Because I wasn't there. <laughs> there was long delays on the, I think it was on the M6, mm -hmm. and so about four. No, so it was three and a bit hours from your place. Yeah. And about an hour into the journey, it took us off the motorway. And if you don't get driving, that is a very early time to come off a motorway. Mm. And it just took us through the, the back streets of back streets. <laughs> like the time, we were on like dirt tracks at one point, <laughs> driving through a field an hour and a half away from the venue. Just thinking, this cannot possibly be the, be the most one. direct route to the thing. And um, just this crazy, and it was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a much nicer drive than normally yeah. going, going up the M6. But um, it took us a bit longer, I think. But um, it's a very nice drive. Got there, um, the Scots were already there, some other guys were there, unloaded everything, and um, set up double gold. Yeah, it was good. I arrived and it was set up. Yeah. I was slightly delayed on the train. I was delayed. How are you? Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> Um, you're stuck on the top of a building, are you? Yeah. <laughs> then the hangover. So I talked to a moth and then rode an eagle. Arrived right. when I wanted to. Way. Way. Never late. Um, yeah, and you had that set up, which was cool. 
Um, and doing a participation game. Yeah, we started running the Siege of Dol Guldur, which is a scenario from issue 3 of SVG, okay. as a participation game. Yep. And, and what did you do, Damien, for when you set up the forces? <laughs> oh, you weren't there. So I, I got the models out of the case, and I put them all on the board, and, um, and played the you game. Played the game. Just played the game. And uh, what models did you put on the board? I put all the models all on the board. All the models in the case. So there were some mounted models in there, weren't there? Six wild riders. Yeah, so you also put six wards on the table. Yeah, and red wards. And six extra hunter rocks. Six extra hunter rocks. Because, you know, why leave the dismounts off? Yeah, I didn't know they were dismounts. <laughs> Haven't played that scenario before. <laughs> like ten times. <laughs> so yeah, as it turns out, I, I decided to give Evil uh, 12 extra models on the Friday night. Who won the first game? Uh, evil. Evil. <laughs> Quite convincingly. <laughs> there was a feeling amongst the good players that they didn't have enough models, I recall. And, uh, yeah, that was true. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we did that, um, and then we went to uh, Mr. Ali's for curry. Curry, it was good. Which is very exciting because curry was booked for Saturday night. So it was a double curry. And we went in on Friday. I remember saying to James, like, "Oh, we're not going to Mr. Ali's tomorrow, then." And you, yeah. And we didn't sit together at the curry either. No, it was great. Yeah. Um, you and Miles were, weren't you? Yeah. You were down the aisle. Um, had a lovely time at the curry. Always yes. good fun. It was indeed. Um, back to the game centre. Yes. Um, and we'd, we'd kind of released the issue then as well, done a mm -hmm. sneaky kind of Friday night and people would get in the magazine and chat, it was great. It's very cool from our point of view to have a stand this yeah. time, like, we've yeah. just sold it out of a box. Yeah, we had the, the board set up but then I brought some, <coughs> bless you, <coughs> delightful. I know. Um, I brought some, like, cooking book stands to hold open the magazine, which was cool. And you'd printed laminated copies of the scenario uh -huh. so that people could read it whilst they were playing. It still happened? No. Just a blue Peter moment or not. Yes, they look like this. See? There you go. That was worth it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, anyway, we did that on the Friday night and then we um, chatted, whatever. Um, then it was tournament Saturday, Sunday. It was, we apparently. were in the tournament. <laughs> we just lazed around at the side. Um, no, we were continuing our participation game, and then when people finished their games, they came over to um, join in. Join in. And it was great, and people did. Mm -hmm. We also had Dave Fredericks sat next to us doing painting on day one. He was painting the converted um, stumpy. stumpy troll from the Battle of the Five Armies for Bradley Cotton. Here, which is um, amazing. Which is really cool. And he also, on day two, then painted a, a one of his Ents. The first time he's ever painted that Ent. Pre-release Ent. Pre-release Ent. Tree Giant. Was into, yeah. Tree Giant. <laughs> which was in, um, which is in the raffle. Yeah, that was awesome. So one of the raffle prizes was a pre-release Tree Giant. From yeah. Shana Fame, which is very cool. Which but the really raffle cool. was on Sunday. We've got racing ahead. Yes, it is. Um... So yeah, we it was very surreal being at a tournament, and the whole tournament kind of passed you by in a way. Yeah, but um, it was re really relaxed and quite nice actually. Yeah, because we weren't was feeling like when we've released the magazine at an event before, we've been rushing between games trying to do everything, and it's just a bit stressful. Yeah, it always feels like I think it's fair to say you're better at this stuff than I am, but it feels slightly like you're you're trying to sell people a magazine out of a box. Mm -hmm. Whereas at this, we had our table set up, people would come over and. And generally speaking, it was more kind of, oh, have you got one? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, we have, there you go. And I don't know, it felt more like people were approaching us because we had this kind of corner of the thing. And the, the board looks incredible. Like, yeah. I thought it would, yeah, to all of them. We thanked them so much for Barry, Steve, Matt, Dave, Kev. That's a lot, isn't it? I think, for the building yeah. stuff. Yeah, for the building stuff. Um, we hadn't seen it in three months. Mm -hmm. We played. We'd, we'd only ever set it up once. I think this is what some people forget that yeah. we set it up once for the weekend for all the for the battle report, and then it all went packed away. And I'd never played on it because I didn't play the battle report. Yeah. So I was having a ball, <laughs> constantly playing the participation game. Like, um, and we every time we played it, we'd move the scenery around, yeah. stuff. Um, so yeah, it was really cool that people were coming up after every game and joining in and um, chucking some dice and I stuff. Think we'll, most people came over at some point during the weekend. Yeah. Dave got distracted from painting. Yeah. Was that on? I can't remember which day it was on, where yeah. he, was, he was trying to finish one of them and he got distracted because he just got stuck in for like two hours. Yeah. 
And I, it was whenever they were voting for Best Army, I can't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday, and um, James was like, you got to come and vote. You went, I'm, I'm, I'm in the courtyard, yeah. like, I, can't, I can't go now. <laughs> um, but Evil took the second game. Oh, yeah. um, so there was a couple of games that all seemed to be going very well, 400 point tournament. Mm -hmm. It was the Subways for lunch again, wasn't it? Yeah. Subway class. I was just going to say, when you said James, it reminded me that we had a cracking round, tea round system where it was me, you, Dave, and James. And Matt as well. And Matt at some yeah. point where we had to basically we all just bought rounds of tea. And I don't know how much tea we drank, but it was an awful, awful lot of tea. It was a lot of tea. It was great. Yeah, because you, it was a good system because it, you know, it's cheap, it's like a quid a cup, but yeah. more importantly, you got brought four cups yeah. of tea for every. <laughs> time you had to go up and get tea, which is a good system. Um, so yeah, we drink a tea all day. Um, yeah, Subway lunch is good. No. Um, yeah, and then, so yeah, Evil won the first two, but then it was needed good to do well, and um, in game three... They did? They did. <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers. Which was, yeah, this was then the second half of Saturday, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and good managed to win it, so same scenario again, but... Um, it was we were quite pleased. That yes, only good one. So yeah. it showed that the scenario was quite balanced, which was cool. But yeah, in the, there were some cool moments throughout. What is our favourite moment? I think you've mentioned it on the Facebook group before. My favourite moment, hands down, was right at the top of. If you imagine this the is board is Jonathan, five stories. Jonathan tight. Davies in control at this yeah. point. Yeah, and Jamie was using gold. Gold, gold. as always. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, gold and a bat swarm are on two sides of a bridge with Randall in the middle, so he's being trapped. He survives a couple of rounds of combat. So you know, it's five minutes, half goals higher than him, yada yada yada. But now he's out of might. Yeah, he's out of might, so he's in trouble. Five stories up. And <laughs> the good. And I, I can't remember. I, it might have been my suggestion, I can't remember, but it was like, you know what would be a sensible idea? <laughs> the most sensible idea is to jump yeah. off. <laughs> and we worked out that it was 11 inches down, so 11 strength three hits <laughs> on Tranduil was less likely to kill him <laughs> than the next <laughs> round, round of combat. combat with Gull. And he. Um, it's on the vlog as well that you'll see at some point. Yeah. Um, we filmed it. Uh, no, it's on. Um, it's on Matt's vlog. Check out. Is that on Matt's vlog? Yeah, check out Generation Shift. Um, uh, Matt Davis's tour vlog on there. Yeah. He filmed this bit, and he takes like three wounds and yeah. saves with faith and survives. <laughs> he jumps and then Gold was like standing at the top of this five story tower. Well, that's not on because it would have killed it. He, he was Gold only had a wound left. One wound he was left, never yeah. going down after him. And it was cool, and everyone was playing it in that kind of. Like fun trying to use the scene yeah. to the advantage, which is cool. So yeah, we really enjoyed that piece. Um, yeah, we yeah we didn't really follow the tournament particularly, but um, spoilers, um, Scott won. If That's it, on Sunday though. Are What's you that? still Saturday? I was kind of it's all morphed into one. <laughs> all right, yeah. With the play testing. Okay. Yeah. The, or did you, what else do you want to say chronologically? We had another curry. We had another curry. We went out for another curry. It was strong. Then we went back to the gaming centre and netted for yeah. a while, which was nice. I think some, a few of the youngsters went out, out. And, um, yeah, we just went back and chilled. It was very mm. really lovely. And Matt, Matt, I think, was doing some green stuff filling on one of the ends. Yeah, yeah. Tree giants. Tree giants. With Dave. <laughs> and, um, and, we just, and it was actually at that point, I know a few other guys were there. Like Ryan was there and... Um, but we had Barry, Dave, Matt, me, you. Yeah. And it was just quite a nice kind of yeah, and John. Um just chilling out and almost like having a bit of a well done. Like, yeah. Well done all. Like looking at the board with everyone's stuff on it and <laughs> I don't know. I found that quite cool. Mm -hmm. Like we haven't done that before, like we haven't sat around with Rick and Dave after issue two and yeah, stuff yeah. and I think um, Barry, Matt, and Dave were really made up with all the kind of you know people basically all weekend just coming over and going, "This looks amazing." That's Steve. Yeah. But yeah, um, and we did a Q and A on uh, Sunday. 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 Yeah. yeah. Which was nice. Which I think was I think it went well. Like um, we were terrified about it. We, yeah. Again, it was kind of we wanted to give Matt, Dave, Steve, Ed, Barry the chance to. Chat about their contributions. And how long did it go on for? Uh, just under an hour. Okay. Turns out, and because people kept asking questions, which was <laughs> lovely. So I, I had this horrific feeling that no one was going to ask any questions. And <laughs> just be sat there. Thank you, good night. <laughs> um, but people kept asking questions. We filmed it, so anyone who wasn't there, if you are interested, we'll be putting it up on the channel um, probably next week, mm -hmm. uh, I think, um, which is pretty cool. And 
people asked some decent questions and it gave them a chance to chat about yeah. the process. So hopefully people enjoyed that. Um, yeah. Something a bit different from mm -hmm. the event, I mm -hmm. think. Um, what else? Um, so yeah, um, can I skip to the raffle? You can skip to the raffle if you want. Well. So yeah, there was a raffle. Um, so throughout the weekend, uh, Jamie um, was taking uh, raffle money, but it wasn't for any cause other than the British Heart Foundation. Um, obviously, um, to remember Godolphin by. So well done for that, uh, Jamie and. Uh, lots of people, everyone at the event got involved and then some people over the Facebook group sent money in. Yeah, I think it was over 350 quid or something that, yeah, wasn't that, that we right. got together. So it's a huge amount. So well done to everyone at the event on the Facebook group and Jamie obviously and James for for doing that. Yeah. Um, really good touch. Yeah, very nice. It was nice. And there were lots of cool stuff in the raffle. Hmm. Great magazine. <laughs> Uh, well done to Rob Alderman. Well, I won, yeah, <laughs> Rob Alderman. Which is really annoying for us. <laughs> because every, essentially everyone at the, at the tournament had got a copy of the magazine. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and the, the person who won the magazine the raffle was someone who wasn't there. And that, that could have been another sale. <laughs> you know, that's another sale down there, isn't it? Um, so yeah, Rob got it and that was cool because he put a picture up in the group. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, then the result came in, which is really bizarre because I suddenly... It was a very strange feeling having been at a tournament going, I've got no clue how anyone's doing. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, um, Joe Wilcock was third? No, James Broad. James Broad was third. Yeah. Um, well, that's it. Mm -hmm. Joe Wilcock was second. Yes. Both of them were driven on lights, have Yes. And the winner was... Alan Little. It wasn't Dave. He must be furious. Yeah, <laughs> it's better than David Reed. Oh, of course. Uh, Alan Little <laughs> winning his second tournament. To not on, is it on the bounce? No, it's been another because one, Toronto Schools is yeah. in the middle. Um, another tournament. Yeah, so, so um, two this year. Yeah, it's good work for Alan. And he has won one previous, quite a long time ago at Stockport. Stockport one, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, in the first year of the GBHL. Yeah. So yeah, well done, Alan. And he had a Goblin Horde. I think he had, did he have Goblin King and Cave Troll, something like that? Don't know. We don't really know. We won't yeah, play. Yeah, we won't play. <laughs> um, but everyone seems to be getting on. But yeah, for an eighty-point tournament, as in, you don't get full league points for winning the event. There was an awful lot of filth. There were a, a lot, lot of Rivendell well. Knights. Fell beasts. Fell beasts. Yeah. Shame on you, GPHL. <laughs> Not the channel. The no. league. Thoughts are only our own. Don't reflect. <laughs> Absolutely wet. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was surprising how many people had brought... I mean, some people did just bring fun armies. Ed brought all Castellans, which was cool, and so did Matt. he brought the nine, didn't he? He brought, he brought nine with Castellans, yeah. and Matt had brought the Witch King and some Castellans, and they had a Castellan off. And he had there was a works. lot of losing a point of will in that game. <laughs> there was a lot of people yelling, lose a yeah. point of will. <laughs> Big fan of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, have we missed anything? Oh, best army was to Josh Tetley. Well done to you. Um, he had a cool Azog, um, mounted Azog, which looked great. Um, and he's he had lived in New Zealand for a bit, so which is awesome because I would love to go to New Zealand. Yeah, that's on my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to um, pay for us to go yeah. to New Zealand. Um, you'll find us ready and waiting. Don't need the mugs. <laughs> yeah. We'll do Take New, it to New Zealand. Zealand reviews. <laughs> New Zealand reviews. Um, so yeah, so. It was a great tournament, well done James and Jamie, but of course our um, whole experience of it was mainly about this, yeah. about launching this. So, so James and Jamie, thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thank you very much. It was. Um... And how did the launch go, Tom? Yeah, good. Um... Oh, Evil won on the, on the second day, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah so so Evil won 3-1, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Due to some horrific choking by yeah. James Broad in the courtyard. Triple the doing. entire White Council oh, got to the courtyard. Yeah. And then he inexplicably chose to roll double twos for Gladriel's yeah. fortified yeah. resist roll. Yeah. So she got her will sapped. And, and then once Galadriel's will sapped you in a bit of trouble. And then inexplicably got Thranduil killed. And both of those were major tactical missteps. Mm. And then it all went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let James Brown roll these dice anymore. <laughs> um yeah, um You were firing out stats all weekend. Stats all weekend. Apart from the spreadsheet. Oh well right? yeah, we did this was our, uh, we, we, we really, 
I mean, obviously, we, we were also able to shift some issue ones and twos whilst we were there, but we shifted more magazine copies at this event than we have done at previous um, issue releases, and we've released every issue at a Stockport event. Despite this being the lowest attended. Yeah, despite this having the fewest people, because I think there were two or three people who didn't get a copy mm. for, you know, for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, My favourite stat is that we got rid of 63 copies of issue, issue three, 3, and there were 50 people there, yeah. so I like those numbers. <laughs> um, yeah, some people had picked up copies for friends back home, um, including uh, Andreas, who took some back to Norway, which was cool. So, um, that's a huge thanks. Yes. Thank you so much, Trevor, for getting on board on that. There's a, there's a slightly smaller pile of magazines in my house, which Emma's thrilled about, and B, it also helps us recover yes. financially getting that return and this is by far the quickest selling issue now, yes which is awesome yes and we are shooting we'll have some up. stats on that at some point i'm yeah. sure which come out nicely so yeah it's good so um it's out there now we hope we hope you enjoy it we hope you've got your copies we are as of today as we're recording this we've started posting them out um, yes to some of the foreign countries um yeah. so that they'll get there just after the release date hopefully. Yeah, it depends on the postage. Because what, with the ones, because we sent them out to some of the YouTube channels. Yep. And um, it seemed to take a couple of days longer to get to Canada versus the US. Yeah, it was quite interesting is, seeing them yeah. arrive. So go and check out, there's um, the DCHL have done us a great review, um, Ollie on the HTL has mm -hmm. done us a great review. Um, it's uh, Mikhail, Wargame, it's yeah, thing. Chris from Mid Sussex Wargame has done it. Yeah, Mikhail in, Mikhail in Sweden. Sweden, who's Crodocan. Yeah. Go and check out his channel. Um, he's done a slow review. I think that's it so far. And I know, yeah. I don't know when it's going up, but I know that the Copenhagen Wargamers, yes. um, Christian and Morton, have, um, and Rob, have um, they did this review. So yeah. I'm going to check that out. And we thank you guys, really appreciate um, you indeed. help spreading the word. And yes. Such. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's out there. Um, yeah, and uh, so basically if you've pre-ordered, we're packing them up and then, well, Damien's mum as well is packing <laughs> them up and we'll get them out to you as soon as possible. We're trying to get them out as close to the release date as possible, but, you know, bear in mind that we have full-time jobs and it takes a while to package these we things up. 50 pre-orders, I think it's worth, I mean, it's, it's over that now, Yeah, yeah. but... I'd say it's probably 60, 70 now, isn't that it? But it's also, we've got to be very careful because we're not, it's not a professional organisation. There's, uh, I, I have to send you the addresses and then which issues specifically to put in and then you need to write that and we, there can be no mistakes during that and then you have to protect the magazine. So how long have we got through? Yeah, yeah. Because then if you've got three issues they can't fit in the letter yeah we have different uh, the letters, letters yeah. and now we have jiffy bags for those which then you need to bubble wrap before they go in so yeah anyway when we're sending you them at least we're deliberately wrapping them well for yeah. you but these are good problems to have yes it means we've got three issues of our little project going and people are supporting it so thank you so much yes indeed that is the sbg issue three launch um there'll be a few videos about it mm -hmm. um uh, coming up and we will be releasing our behind the scenes vlog mm -hmm. which um, charted the entire journey of it in a few parts relatively soonish yes. I think once we get around to it yes and that if you're if you like that kind of blog that we put out that's the kind of one of the kind of things that would be in the subscription yeah. package basically but month on month rather than one huge thing in one go Absolutely. And so, um, that's our kind of catch up mm -hmm. on a little review of the Desto Stockport. And so, what we will now do is sign off in the now traditional way where the uh, Rohan captain will wander to war. <laughs> traditional Rohan captain. Against. I don't know who we're we doing this time. Oh, yeah, we haven't decided. Find out in a minute. <laughs> okay, and here we are with the 50 point back wrap with the defending champion um, three or four times. <laughs> I know Ryan just won't get back to us with stats, it's crazy. Uh, the Rohan Captain with mm. a shield, what a legend. What a legend. And I have. Gollum, who is Hobbit Gollum. Yep. Um, who costs 35 points. What? Who gets the ring. Yes, indeed. Which is quite exciting. And a Wark, which was Ian Marley's <laughs> suggestion, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. So that's it, you're actually playing at a uh, seven point deficit.
Don't need it. Don't need it. It's just covering him with that. Um, yeah. So we'll now go into priority. Yeah. Uh, the Ryan Captain gets a two. Strong start from everyone. Six. One gets a six. The Ryan gets a one on your count. Yeah. Will you be putting on the ring? Yes. Yeah, the golem's five inches, isn't it? Yeah. So he puts on the ring. Does he have to roll for it this turn? No. Uh, Wagi? Yep. Not in charge range, presumably? No. Uh, Rohan and Cappy will go forward. Okay. And um, Priority. Priority. Uh, one strong. That's more than a one. Six again. Um, can I charge with Gollum? Is he in range? Yeah. So I need to roll a one or a two to be able to move him. No, you get to move him. Can't might it. Nah. Uh, well, I'll have. Let's try and deal with the wild. He's only first. got one mate. Okay. Uh, the wild charge. <laughs> it's on. Okay. Cappy by Cappy, using our uh, first time on the channel, potentially. Bosh does, don't I? Bosh. Here comes Cappy. It's a spectacular Bosh out of five. A five, though. Five's alright. Five's alright. Wog needs a six, though. Yeah, that's no good. Uh, so wants to chop him up. He has yeah. chopped him up. <sighs> Not doing your job, Wog. It's the captain. For you gone. Pins party. We all knew it would be this. <laughs> captain gets a six. It's mine. Yeah. Let's have it. Uh, I need to roll a one or a two. Not a one or a two. A six. I should have got you to take the ring off. I forgot about that tactical Charge. thing. <laughs> That's why you don't feel like it. Oh, whilst you're controlling me. Control I'm getting to the ring off. Yeah. Cool. So can come back to that. Does it say you can... Yeah, you can, def you can definitely get it to take it off. This is, this is thrilling content. Yeah. This is just me. Okay. Um... So we'll get to it if you try and do it. You me. are higher fight value anyway. Yes. So there's no point in me doing anything. You can faint. I will faint. <laughs> Captain gets a six, it's good. It's <laughs> alright, Gollum will smash. How much money has he got? One. One. Come on, Gollum! Oh, Cappy, my Cappy! Three highest. Strange choice. What defense is he? Four. Four. Double four. So Does he have fate? Triple. One fate. Two wounds. Point right. Gollum has a fate. This could go really badly. Right? Yeah, he needs a three. Don't go. It's like both are on us. Oh, he loves it. Thought he had it. So Ryan cuts him down to one might. Yeah. Gollum down to one wound, no fate. Yes. Good I job. Do with winning this. <laughs> Um, Gollum does still have his might point. Yes. One might each. Did I, I charge you then? Because you need to take Courage Test to charge me. Probably. Oh, it really matters. Oh. Uh, I need a six to take it. No, it is. I'll take a Courage Test. I'm one inch away. Yeah. So it's a minus one. He rolls a six. His Courage will probably be four, won't it? Yeah. So that's minus one. He'll use his will point. Okay, you're in. Charge in. Big roll. One might left. Oh, oh and of course he gets the six. <laughs> Gollum has to get at least a five with his mic point. Yeah. Oh, does it? He's in. Defense five, strength four. Yeah, so five 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 defense six. Yeah. Five stone. Oh, it's a joke from Gollum. Oh, we don't like to see that. That's <laughs> not strong. Priority. Cappy gets a two. Gollum gets a five. Gollum with his ring roll gets a five. Can you go? Come on, Cappy. Come on, Cappy. Another six from Cappy. Oh, oh every time. <laughs> he just... Gold stars and white. All he needs is a five. Oh, no. Gets the six. He's a five to wound him. First wound. Come on, fives. Oh, oh, no. oh it's a wound. Second roll. Oh, 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 it's oh. a double six. This could be oh, it for the row, Captain. It's swung. He has one fight point. You need a three. He's got a white point. Oh, no. I hate these. Oh. Doesn't count, it's gone. <laughs> He's gone! Would you believe it? Oh. <laughs> I'm not. Who saw this coming? Cappy is gone. I think statistically everyone saw it coming, right? I don't know, after that not first a of times, after that first fight. Cappy has fallen and Gollum is our new champion. Well done, Ian Varley. Um, going to a post battle right, right, right then. He's gone. He's gone. How do you feel? 
bit dirty. Yeah, I know, right? It's like the nail in work, right? Yeah. It, you, you want it. I mean, in a in a 50-point back rack capacity, you want to regain control of the champion. Yeah. But equally, there's some that you just don't want to take out, you know? Yeah. He, he was a guy who took out the casting. Yeah, he was a legend. He was a he was a folk hero. <laughs> and, um, and you killed him. Yeah. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> Rolling on one for his face. I fought for the wounded him twice. And so I thought. Double I thought he had to wound. I thought like stats wise yeah. in that game he shouldn't win this. Gollum and the wild going together. Well, he took the wild out. Took the wild out. S- strong. Giblin wouldn't have been pleased with that wild one on one with the wrong. <laughs> <Captain laughs> he Mike. wouldn't. Uh, um, <laughs> and then. And then two wounds on him. Yeah. And you saved your fate. Yeah. Key. I could have died then. One in three chance to take him out. And then I step on up. <laughs> and so often happens at 50 point back reps. Fate means nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and um, um, the captain fell. Yeah. So we have a new champion. Yeah. Gold in the Wog. Gold in the Wog. Did not need the seven points. No, so all the work and the deficit. Six points, it's nine for a fell one. Sounds like some six political points. satire. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> the Gollum, the Warg, and the British deficit walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, there we go. Um, well done, sir. Mm. I look forward to challenging you next week. Yes, I'm Or more probably more. in about a month, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So, um, there you go, there is the return of the Plantier for at least one week. Apparently, we don't know when it's back next. Mm-hmm. Could be next week, apparently. It gives Ryan time to come up with the table of um, yeah. results for the... Um, but we will, we'll try and keep you in the loop as far as uh, when the next one will be on the um, mm-hmm. Gibbert Hill Podcast Facebook page. Until then, however, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, support your host in the links below. Um, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Support your hobby. Now, beat strategy, battle game.